Welcome to the John and Olive Diefenbaker Museum. The house was constructed beginning in 1911 as the home of Henry Jaffrey, the manager of the local Imperial Bank of Canada. The house actually was not bought until 1947 by the Diefenbakers. Mr. Diefenbaker bought it for his wife Edna, who told him it was her dream house. Edna passed away in 1951 from leukemia, and he married Olive in 1953, and they lived in the house until 1957. And in 1953, when Diefenbaker was elected Prime Minister, they did have a house in Ottawa. After that point in time, Mr. Diefenbaker did not live in this house any longer. We'll start our tour right here in the living room. The living room is very similar to what it was in the day of the Diefenbakers living here, with the exception of the north wall. At the time they moved in, there was behind what is now hanging there is a picture of Mr. and Mrs. Diefenbaker, a doorway leading into the sun porch. They eventually closed off the sun porch because it was very cold and drafty in the wintertime. And I want to talk a little bit about this revolving bookcase in the corner. It had been in Mr. Diefenbaker's law office when he was practicing in Prince Albert. It passed on to his brother Elmer, and after Elmer's death, Mr. Diefenbaker got it back. All the books in the bookcase belonged to Mr. Diefenbaker. He officially gave the house to the city of Prince Albert to be used as a museum, and then the house stood empty until 1980. One, when the Historical Society started uh, developing it as a museum and the site opened in 1983. In 2019, on August 16th, the house was officially designated a National Historic Site of Canada on the 40th anniversary of Diefenbaker's death. Another interesting piece which I'd like to show you is this hockey jersey here. The Deefs Chiefs Prince Albert Old Timers. The Deefs Chiefs hockey team, the Old Timers hockey team, would travel all over Canada and the United States. And when people found out they were from Prince Albert, they would always say, How's Deef or How's the Chief? So the hockey team asked him whether they could rename their team to Deefs Chiefs Old Timers. He gave them permission. They made him an honorary captain. And as you can see in the picture here, all of the old timers and Diefenbaker sitting in the middle. The museum is very important because there are not a lot of official residences open to the public of past prime ministers. We have Laurier House in Ottawa and Diefenbaker House in, in Prince Albert. And I don't think there's many more. So it's kind of interesting to go into the house and see how they lived prior to their political careers really taking off. We just get to see a different side of Diefenbaker and how well known he was in the community and how he loved the community of Prince Albert, where that doesn't always show through in the Diefenbaker Canada Centre. The Diefenbaker Canada Centre focuses on his very political accomplishments and we get to focus on him as a person, which is different. This room is what we call the game room, but it was originally the room in which both Edna and Olive slept. If you look around the room, you can see some of the interests that Mr. Diefenbaker had. He really enjoyed hunting geese and ducks, but he didn't hunt big game. What he really enjoyed, though, was fishing. His dad used to take John and, and his brother Elmer fishing quite a lot when they were young, and he followed through with fishing for quite a lot when he was older. This is an Atlantic salmon over here that Mr. Diefenbaker himself caught, and there are pictures of him fishing in a number of different places. The interesting shot down here in the left-hand corner is the, of Mr. Diefenbaker at Lac La Ronge, where the morning after he was elected Prime Minister, he's alleged to have gone fishing, exceeded his quotient, and the game warden came up and gave him a ticket. 
just as he was writing out the ticket, somebody came up and said, Mr. Diefenbaker, congratulations on being elected Prime Minister. We're not sure whether the ticket was ripped up, he paid it, or it just sat in abeyance. We have the support of the city of Prince Albert. Without them, we definitely wouldn't be in the position with the John and Olive Diefenbaker Museum that we are now. Um, and of course, the Diefenbaker Canada Centre, uh, because most of the artifacts in the house are actually owned by the Diefenbaker Canada Centre and not the Prince Albert Historical Society. We look after the operations of the building, but um, the Diefenbaker Canada Centre has all of the artifacts. So as a three-way partnership, we really focus on developing the best displays and programming that we can in that site. If you have program ideas that you'd like to see on Max TV Local, email us at max.local at sastel.com.